Hey guys, welcome to the photo department. I wanted to make a intensive video about metering for film, but a lot of people have made videos like that and I wanted to do something a little more simple because I think what people struggle with as far as metering is just kind of understanding the concept and I think that that's true because that's my experience. Even finding really well-made videos about the concept, about how to meter for film, they're just, it's convoluted and it's difficult to navigate, especially for a dumb dumb like me. So I wanted to kind of break this out into several different episodes with each episode highlighting a specific type of metering. So this episode, we're going to go out and I'm going to show you how I personally meter my film with a light meter for the shadows. If you're like me, you've heard the term metering for the shadows a million times. I've seen people asking photographers uh, in person or either via comments on YouTube videos or on Instagram stories, hey, what's a good way to meter? And then metering for the shadows is kind of the default answer. It's kind of like, just meter for the shadows, as if that, <laughs> to a beginner, means anything. So what does metering for the shadows actually mean? Without getting into the science behind metering, metering for the shadows means you're taking a meter reading of your scene in the darkest part of the scene. What this does is it tells your camera that it wants to expose the darkest parts higher at a higher level in order for there to be detail in those areas. And that is a good thing because like I've talked about before, film can handle a lot of overexposure and a lot of highlights. So if you expose for the shadows, meaning you're exposing a lot more for the entire scene than normal, you're going to get details in the shadows and your film is going to hold those highlights really well. It's definitely a really great way to meter for a lot of situations. It's not perfect for every situation, but once we go through more of these metering scenarios, you'll kind of understand which situations might call for which style of metering.
Thank you guys for watching. I hope that this little comparison will give you a good idea of what metering for the shadows does and the differences that it'll have depending on the scene and depending on how you're shooting. Hopefully you took something away from this. And if you did, make sure you are subscribed so that you can see my next upcoming metering videos that will also be similarly broken down for ease of understanding. Uh, those will be coming up soon. And yeah, follow me on Instagram if you'd like. You can follow this channel at The Photo Department or you can follow my personal work at Christopher Michael Sturm. Also, if you haven't checked out the Spooky Park Bench podcast yet, our first episode was on Monday. You can listen to it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, SoundCloud, and tons of other places. You can follow us at Spooky Park Bench on Instagram, where we will post photos from each episode and uh, links to where you can listen to the podcast if you'd like. Um, that's it. I love you. See you later. Since it's still a little bit overcast in full sun, I'm getting at F11 a reading of about 400 and in the shade I'm getting about 320. So not quite a full stop of difference because it's a little bit uh, diffused. Thank <laughs> you.